Hello, and welcome to ECMATH. Today we're going to get you with a quick video on fractional exponent factoring, specifically when all the exponents on the fractions are positive. We'll cover the negative fractional exponents in a new video. So to understand fractional factoring, I think it's really important to understand what is factoring anyway. Like, what is going on? And if you think about what happens when you're factoring, it's really just the opposite of multiplying. So um, whatever you distributed, if you distribute two terms together using whatever method you choose, box, foil, rainbow, whatever you choose, factoring is taking that process, which gave you one big term with maybe three separate terms, and undoing it and returning it equivalently back to its previous form. Well, we already have something that's the opposite of multiplication from way back when, that's division. So factoring and dividing are kind of the same thing. And that's gonna help when we do this frac fractional exponents, it's gonna help us fi figure out what remains in the exponent after we factor stuff out. Um, before we do anything with fractional exponents, I wanna show you what I'm talking about. So if I told you to factor a two out of this expression right here, we're gonna kind of approach this as if uh, I didn't know what to do. Well, what I might do is set up a bracket. Actually, I'm gonna set up down here. Might set up a bracket and put a two outside because it said factor out a two. And then I would think about, well, shoot, I'm gonna have to fill in three terms here. And each of those terms, I do know there's gonna be plus signs, each of those terms will be determined by taking the original coefficient and dividing it by two because I took that two and moved it to the outside. So to sort of keep everything in balance, I have to divide the inside by two. And that will give you the result that you might expect. 11x squared plus 7x plus one. Let's proceed. So, excuse me, say we were asked to factor 2x to the 3 halves plus 5x to the 1 half. Whoa, that's different than before. Let's take a look at this x to the 3 halves for a second. So I'm not going to do any factoring yet. I just want to show you guys that this is really x to the 2 halves times x to the 1 half. And that means that each of these terms has what I've been calling a secret greatest common factor of x to the 1 half. And if there's a greatest common factor, we can factor it out. So how do you do it? So in general, for all these problems, that secret GCF I was talking about is going to be whichever power of x has an exponent that is the smallest. Um, because of that exponent will, any smaller exponent will always be able to be found inside of a larger exponent when you divide those exponents into multiple terms. OK, so just like before, I'm now going to factor out x to the 1 half. And just like the problem with the 2, I'm going to set up a bracket for my result and put x to the 1 half out to the side. Then I'm going to think about what will return inside. This plus sign is going to carry straight down, so you can put that there right away. The first term. I'm factoring this out, and factoring is like division. So to figure out what's gonna go inside, I can take this term and divide it by x to the 1 half. Now I have to do a little bit of algebra here. Um, nothing's gonna happen with the two, because it's like a one. It's just two over one, so I can write a two. Uh, now I have x to the 3 halves divided by x to the 1 half. And that's gonna be the same as x to the 3 halves minus 1 half. It's that exponent rule about subtraction. Hey, 3 halves minus 1 half, is two halves, or just one, x to the one. So this whole first term is just gonna be two x. I'm going to do the same for the second term. So I'm going to pretend to divide it by x to the one half and see what I get. And that will tell me what should go here since I'm dividing this x to the one half, but what I'm really doing is moving it to the outside, like over here. So I divide this by this. Oh, well, this is just, anything over itself that reduces to one and i have five times one so the second piece really is just five and wow isn't that a lot nicer 
Uh, I could even write this, I could write this in a couple different ways. I could leave it exactly as is. I could write this one half uh, as root x if I wanted to. And it could be something like root x times the quantity 2x plus 5. And that's a whole heck of a lot nicer than that. If I asked you to graph that now, um, maybe you don't know what root x graphs like, but you sure know what 2x plus 5 looks like. And you could probably work the other uh, steps out from there. Another example for you. So just like before, our secret greatest common factor is whichever x exponent is the smallest. So in this case, that's going to be the entire quantity x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. I'm going to encourage you right now to pause this video and write this problem on your paper. Try it out. See what you can do. Did you pause? I hope you did. Welcome back. Now we're going to solve the problem together. Um, again, if you did work it out on your own, you're welcome to pause this video at any time and continue working and keep working um, until we're in agreement. So if I've decided that x plus 1 to the 2 thirds is the piece I'm going to take out, then I'm going to set up my brackets. I'll make them a little bigger this time. And I'm going to write it over here on the right hand side because there's room there. You can factor things out to the left or to the right and it doesn't matter. So you know, don't get so used to just one side. Um, minus sign is going to carry straight down. Now I'm going to start doing my division. I'll start from the left and work over. So to figure out what goes here, I'm going to pretend that I'm dividing uh, this term by x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. And again, I'm not really dividing it. I'm factoring it out and using division to figure out what goes in the circle. Well, I have like bases, x plus 1 and x plus 1, so just like before, I'm going to subtract the exponents. Uh, instead of writing the whole thing out, I'm just going to do 8 thirds minus 2 thirds. Hey, that's 6 thirds, or 2. So that means that in here, I'm going to have the term x plus 1 to the 2. Over on this side, I'm dividing something by itself. And so that entire thing is going to reduce to 1. And this is just 2 times 1, or 2. Now in this case, uh, before, on the previous problem, we said we were done here. In this case, we're not done, because this guy is still something that is a binomial, and I feel like it should be able to combine with that 2. So let's try that out. Use your very well-practiced, very well-memorized perfect square factoring pattern to show that this is x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then minus 2 from over here. It's kind of a pain to rewrite that each time, but honestly, I encourage you to do it, because otherwise you will forget it in a final answer. So just keep writing it, and we're one step away anyway. Uh, final answer here, it's just going to be x squared plus 2x, and then 1 and 2 combine and make minus 1 times x plus 1 quantity to the 2 thirds. thirds. And here's all that problem together for your enjoyment. All right, here's our last problem of the video. I tried to come up with a challenge for you by giving you some different variables. So let's assess and analyze. Um, first thing I notice is I have x's and y's. But the second thing I notice is that we're kind of being a little tricky here. These x squareds don't have fractional exponents on them. They don't even uh, have very many exponents on them at all. So we're basically going to be able to treat them separately and not worry about them. Um, now I compare these exponents, I notice that 1 halves is bigger than 5 halves. So the thing that I'm going to try to factor out is 3y plus 1 to the 1 half. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try to factor out a single x term. Uh, and I'm going to do those things both at once because those are both greatest common factors. I think I'm going to write it on this side here. So I'll write x and 3y plus 1 to the one half, and then make myself a big old bracket, just like before, uh, to figure out what's going to go inside. Now this minus sign will carry down, and then I'm going to do the division here and division there. Um, I'm going to do the division in the opposite order I've been doing it. I'm going to start over here, because this term is so nice. I have factored out everything, right? I've factored out x and 3y plus 1 to the one half. Um, and, well, x is going to reduce with x, so that's not going to have anything remaining. Um, 3y plus 1 to the 
five halves divided by one half. Um, I said everything would cancel out. This term is not going to cancel, um, but I am going to, going to be able to do five halves minus one half, which is four halves or two. So this term will just become uh, the x's will reduce to with each other. 3y plus 1 to the power of 2 when I do 5 halves minus 1 half. Over here on the other side, we're dividing by x and 3y plus 1 to the 1 half. Here, sort of the opposite thing cancels. These guys are going to reduce down to 1 with each other, and x squared and x uh, don't completely cancel, but they do reduce down to just x. So I've got this quantity times x minus 3y plus 1. Now, in the prior case, I said expand this binomial. You could still do that. However, I'm going to recommend that you not. Um, in the prior case, I want to scroll back up to it for a second. Notice that when we expanded, we found some terms that would add together and match up and it would further simplify. If you expand this out, a 9y squared plus 6y plus 1, none of those will combine with an x. You're just going to have something like that. Honestly, I don't think that's simpler. Um, it's you know sort of a hazy line about what's simplified versus what's not simplified in these cases. Um, but honestly, I think in this case, this guy right here, is probably your simplest answer format. So I hope you've enjoyed this sort of quick hit about fractional exponents. Um, as always, see me if you have any more questions. Um, try some more problems out of the book. This was just a limited selection of problems. You can also make up your own, trade them with a friend, try to factor those. Um, and if you need more practice, just come see me. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.